Good morning, guys. Hi, I'm Lori Winslow, and I am with Rain or Shine Chalk Design. Um, I am an independent designer for Chalk Couture, and Chalk Couture makes some amazing uh, chalk paints and permanent inks and these amazing transfers that are like stencils, but they're adhe self-adhesive, and uh, they make projects beautiful um, without much effort at all. So anyway, I'm glad you're here this morning. Thanks for joining in. Um, I do have a super cool project today. Um, not really what I thought I was going to do this morning. Good morning, Kathy. Um, glad you're here this morning. Um, but I found this cool project and I'm just so excited to share it with you guys. Um, a really fun way to make a surface um, that is super inexpensive and has a really cool look. So I'm excited to share it with you guys. Um, so some things that you're going to need to do this, um, kind of unexpected things, uh, a measuring tool, not so unexpected, but um, these foam boards uh, that you can get at the Dollar Tree. Um, I actually got mine at Hobby Lobby because um, I wasn't going to the Dollar Tree, but Dollar Tree is the way to go. A dollar, can't beat that. Um, so you need a white one and you need a black foam core board if you can get one of those as well. Um, so are you ready? I gotta show you what's really cool. So you can make a wood look from that foam board. So take a look at this piece of wood that is just made out of that foam board. So think about all the possibilities of creating with a super lightweight um, foam board. So this was my first attempt. I think it'll get better as I go. Um, so this is a pretty light wash. Um, just giving it a try and seeing what it was like. Uh, just, then just said I had to share with you guys. So the idea is you create your boards and then you hot glue them to a black foam core board so that if there's any space between your planks, um, it's black behind them and you would not be able to tell that, you know, these weren't boards and that there was something behind it. So thanks, Kathy. I know I'm just so excited about it and it's so easy. It's a super easy, fun uh, process. So probably the most important thing about this is knowing what a board looks like so if you haven't really studied the grain of wood um, take a look at it because I think you can make it more and more realistic if you know what boards really look like so um, this is not my idea this I'm gonna give a plug to peppermint cactus um, she's on YouTube and Facebook and she is the one who has the t t tutorial on these um, I'll show you um, how to do it as well but she has a really nice tutorial and she has tutorials for every wood color you can imagine so um, really fun really fun group and a lot of um, inspiring ideas over on her page um, of other people who are taking her idea and running with it so all right so let's get started on how to do this um, so the very first thing you have to do obviously is cut your uh, foam board which can be a little tricky. Um, <clears throat> so when you cut your foam board, um, if you get it from the Dollar Tree, it's 20 inches by 30, no, by 10 inches. No, hang on, let me think. Is it 20 by 10 or is it 20 by 30? 20 by 30. Um, so she recommends cutting boards in three inch increments. Um, that's what she likes to do and that's what I did. Um, to see what it was like. Um, now obviously three inches is not a real board size, but I mean, if you really wanna make it a real board size, do three and a half. Good morning, Lisa. Uh, if you wanna make a real board, do like three and a half inches if you want it to be super you know, realistic for the size, but I don't think it's that big a deal. I see lots of different kinds of boards, um, fake boards and that sort of thing, all different sizes. So. Let's talk about how to cut this foam board. The easiest way to cut it is with, and the best way, is just with a straight edge razor blade. So um, 
you need to have a pack of those because um, I've only, like I said, I just started this project, just gave it my first try this weekend, and I, my blade is still sharp, but from what I understand, it dulls blades. So get some, get some sharp blades. Um, if you can't find those, I think uh, Harbor Freight would have them uh, here locally. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure out on our foam board, um, just measure out. So I just measured my whole length. So I have a 36 inch board. Uh, the Dollar Tree boards are 30 by 20. So she does hers, um, she cuts her 20 inch section into three inch pieces and that gives her six boards that are three by 30 inches, um, which is a pretty good board. Um, Mine I cut because I had a 36 inch board. I just cut it in half. I didn't want those big long pieces because I was learning. And so I just made 18 inch pieces. Um, so the biggest trick that um, she'll share with you, again, Peppermint Cactus, if you haven't checked her out, um, she's the one who has this idea and I don't know that it was her idea either, but she has given some great tutorials. So her biggest tip I think that helped me the most was that when you are going to cut your foam board, after you have it all measured and lined, I put I draw lines and then I measure with my, um, then I hold my straight edge. She said the most important thing, and I agree, is that when you are going to start dragging, that you put your blade up higher and then start dragging into your foam board. So don't start right at the edge of your board because you'll never cut that first piece. Um, start up high and cut through. And I was not able to, I think because I bought a board somewhere else, I think the Dollar Tree boards might be a little thinner. Um, my board was a little heavier. Um, I was not able to cut all the way through, but it was okay. I got through, except for the back paper. I got through everything except the back paper. So then I just cut it from the back side and it was not an issue. Um, I'm not worried about the back side looking any particular way. So, Cutting the boards is the first step. Cutting up your pieces. And that does take some, some time. So take your time and don't be in a hurry um, on that part. Um, then the fun part begins. So I've already cut up some boards. Um, if you guys want me to show you how to cut them, I can. I just figured that's something you can probably figure out. It's um, just something you have to kind of play around with and I, I really think the biggest tip is the whole thing about the straight red a straight edge blade and um, she said she has tried all different kinds of cutting devices um, box cutters she said they always kind of don't work as well as the straight edge so I tried it and it worked pretty well um, the things you're gonna need are some uh, clear wax um, this is kind of getting hard to find. I know, I don't know why all of our paint supply has kind of vanished, but the craft supply for paints is tough to find. Um, she uses the Waverly of this, but I couldn't find it right now. Um, her point about using the Waverly was the biggest challenge of this surface is that this is paper. And we know that if you put acrylic on paper, um, acrylic is going to get this too wet and then it's going to kind of fall apart. So you don't want to use acrylic. So you're not going to be able to use acrylic paints. You're going to have to use chalk paints. So the Waverly is a chalk paint based. Um, I used this and it worked fine. She said if you, if you work on it and then wait 24 hours, if it hasn't ruined the surface, then you're okay. Um, she said, but it can take up to 24 hours for the surface to show whether it's going to be affected or not. So I use this one and this antique wax as well. So I use those two and then you need some kind of a chalk paint. And I did not have a black chalk paint. So I used um, my chalk couture paint paste because it is made from chalk. And I didn't know if it was going to work or not. This is not what she uses, but because it's chalk, it's very dry and you don't want so much water. 
because the water is what affects your paper. So, and it, it worked pretty well. Um, I went for a really light wash um, because I didn't know how my boards were gonna hold up, um, or how the foam board was gonna hold up. Um, I'm gonna try a little heavier wash today and I'll see how my, um, how my folk art stuff holds up. Folk art is the same is made by the same people as Waverly, um, but it's probably a different formula. So, um, like I said, the the gal from Peppermint Cactus did not recommend folk art, but this is what I have, and it worked yesterday on what I was trying to do. All right, so let's get into the fun part. So the first thing you want to do is create. Let me put you guys down a little bit so you can see. The first thing you want to do is create some interest to your boards so that they don't look flat and so that they actually look like boards. Um, so to make those um, fun little knot holes, um, what she recommended was to just use your fingernail. My fingernails are kind of short right now. I trimmed them really well. So I, you just go in and you just use your nail and make kind of a rounded, uh, are you guys gonna be able to see that? You just make kind of a rounded indentation and then you wanna keep making that indentation until it pops through that front piece. So you're actually gonna break into the paper. Um, you don't want it to be too roughed up, but you wanna break that straight down. I saw, um, on her page, somebody was using a metal measuring spoon to make kind of a cup shape um, that worked for them better. Uh, this worked fine for me. Like I said, the important thing about this is knowing what wood looks like. So um, I saw a few people who made these uh, and they just made kind of a horseshoe shape and it doesn't really look like a knot. So you need to take some look, take a look at some wood grain and really see what it looks like. So I'm going to break that skin, which is not easy if you don't have nails. Uh, and then I put a little interest into the middle of that. I always think there's, um, there's some, there's always some interest and some darkening in the middle of a knot. I don't know if you guys can see that at all. My lighting in here is wacky, um, but I just found a metal to, you know, metal piece of metal that I could kind of uh, push into my foam. So you just keep doing that. Um, you don't need a knot hole in every piece, um, maybe here and there. Um, one of the cool things that um, you can do is make different, wa different color washes and then mix them together. So I want to make this a darker wash and these will be lighter so that it looks like, you know, the boards came from different runs and they look a little different. So you can also take like a skewer and just add some holes. You don't want to go through the backside. You just want to go through the front. Um, so these can be like little wormholes, you know, um, Boards come in all kinds of conditions. If you if you don't want your boards to be, you know, super aged, then you don't have to bang them up as much. But they do need some interest, otherwise it's going to look very flat. So, and try not to do them all exactly the same, which is kind of hard. Um, you have to try to be creative. Um, this kind of has a smooth end. I kind of like to make some little marks in it. I don't know if you guys are... Tell me if you guys can see any of the, what's happening on this board. Can you guys see any of what I'm doing? <laughs> Give me like a thumbs up or a yes or a no. I don't know how well you can see, which is a bummer. All right, so I have put a little bit of distressing on each of these pieces of foam board. Hopefully you guys can see a little bit of that. And the first thing I'm going to do, so what she did was she used a chippy brush and um, I got these sponges. You can get um, the big round sponges at Dollar Tree and just cut them in half. Um, so that's a nice inexpensive way to use that. 
you can just very slightly see it. Okay, when I put this color on, you'll be able to see the distressing a lot better. So sorry about that, guys. Um, my lighting in here is not great. So what she did was she created two different um, pans. She created a pan with the antique wax and with the clear wax. Um, and she did, there's some layering that you do with that one. And then she did a different pan that has the same thing, a chippy brush and sponge and the chalk, uh, chalk paint. So we'll do different washes for different things. Um, but the one you're going to use the most really is this clear wax. All right. So let's give that a try. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load my brush with this clear. And you're really using this the most. This is the uh, medium that's going to put everything onto your surface. And then I'm going to reactivate. I just left everything where it was. I finished up last night playing around with it. And just a tiny, tiny speck of the brown. You don't want very much when you start. Um, in fact, we'll get a piece of paper towel. I'm gonna load my brush up good so that it's got some on there. But then I'm gonna take it off. Take off a lot so that I just have a real light wash. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on these edges. So what really makes it look like a board is the fact that the edges are dark. It really is a trompe l'oeil effect where you are um, fooling the eye. And one of the ways you do it is by making the edges of the boards darker, they stand out to your eye and your brain thinks that it is dimensional. So I'm just working on these edges, making sure that I've got all of the edges have some color. Okay, then I'm going to go back in, get a little bit more, make sure it's not too strong. And I'm going to come in to like my knot. I'm going to give it a little color. And one of the things she um, tells you is that you don't want to leave um, a color splotch like that for very long. The color splotch like that will, um, if you leave it for too long, it kind of won't go away in that shape. So you want to add a little bit of color so that it's highlighted. And then that's when we're gonna get our sponge. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put some of my clear wax on there. I'm gonna go in right where I had that other color. I don't need very much. And she said, just leave your sponge. It, she said, just let it be loaded It'll get reactivated. And then we're going to go over these little patches where we added color. So now I'm just going to add some color with my sponge. I'm going to go over those spaces. I'm just going to kind of squish my sponge. And I'm going to keep going the wood grain direction. So everything I do is going to be in the wood grain direction because that's creating my striations that are going to make it look like a board. So everything I'm doing needs to work together with the board. Every time I go back to my paint, I always go to the clear first. If I need a little bit of the darker, I'll get it. Oops, I'm not showing you guys. If I need a little bit more, I get a little bit more, but then I want to kind of dump it off. I don't want to I don't want a huge amount of color. And this is just kind of a building up process. 
Let me tell I got too much on there. Now, if you want a really dark board, um, you're just going to start with a little bit darker and just build up gradually darker. So I'm going to try to do these two boards a little darker and do these two a little lighter so that you can see kind of the difference. Okay, and you can already see that we're building up kind of a, a striated looking board there. It's very slight, but you can see that it's already kind of getting that underlay of of color. The little chippy brush is really important. It is going to give us a lot of our streaking um, that gives us again more of that wood look. Now if you wanted a gray, more of a gray board, then the next thing you would do is after you've got a little base coat of brown, then you're going to come over here and do the same thing. You're going to get in this clear, I'm going to get some clear wax on my brush, clear wax on my brush, and then I'm going to come over here and get some of this chalk paste, which has gotten a little bit dry. Oh, let me grab my water. I was excited though to be able to use my chalk paste. I do not have any black um, chalk paint and I've looked around and I can't find it anywhere and then it dawned on me. I have chalk paint. Why don't I just use my chalk paste? And I was tickled when I realized even more that my chalk paste is super dry, which is the criteria um, for this. We can't have a lot of wet and we know how dry that chalk gets. So same thing, dab it off so that you're not too heavy handed. And then you're just gonna pull across and you see how that chippy brush it's just giving us kind of a wood look, very simple. I'm not doing anything fancy, I'm just pulling that brush across and it is doing the work. Now, if I go on the end of my board, if I pull it up against the end, you'll end up giving yourself a nice dimension on the end. It kind of looks like that end of that board is distressed. And you definitely want that as well. So you're just gonna build up the layers of these colors until you like the color you have. Um, you can go more You can go more of this way, and then you get another effect, another wood tone. So you're basically going to bounce back and forth between your, your brush and your sponge. So after I've brushed on some color, I'm going to grab my sponge. First thing I'm going to do is dip it into my white, my clear wax. And then I'm going to dip it over here. I actually want all four or all three colors. When I'm doing that depth, I want all my colors. So I want black, I want brown. Okay, and this really is something you just play around with and figure out. Um, I tried it at first and I left my boards really light. Um, I left it for a while and then came back and could tell that it just wasn't dark enough. I didn't, it didn't really look like a board yet. There's too much white showing. Um, on that gal's video, she shows a really light board. Um, it's not my favorite. I prefer 
most of her things that were a little bit darker. So if you're going to watch one of her tutorials, I would recommend not doing the really light wash. Um, to me, it just doesn't really look like a board. But everything else, she's got how to do like maple wood. Um, she's trying to build up her collection of tutorials for the different wood textures, wood grains, and she's also doing pretty cool and amazing projects, just putting the wood together in different ways, cutting different shapes, making like a chevron pattern, and she's doing all of it with this amazing just Dollar Tree foam boards, guys. I just thought that was so clever. It really uh, tickled me to see, and I just had to try it and see if this was you know, easy to do, hard to do. Um, it definitely takes a little finessing, um, takes a little time to build up the colors, but oh my goodness. So my thinking is, when I get a black foam core board, and I'll try to do that today, my thinking is I'm gonna glue, hot glue these onto my the foam board, and then I'm thinking this is just dying to have the rooster transfer put on it. Um, it's the perfect style, um, but most of our chalk couture transfers would look great on some kind of board like this. Now one of the things she did was she would put her boards out um, on the blackboard and then she would take and maybe cut this in half and make a border around the boards so they look like a frame. And I'll do some of that too. Um, I just know that I can only show so much in one day, uh, in one video. Um, I totally recommend that you go over and check her out. Um, Peppermint Cactus. Uh, and she's just really um, an everyday crafter, really humble. Um, she's really surprised by everybody getting into this. Um, and she says she just started the video tutorials because so many people were asking her, you know, how did you do that? How did you do that? All right. So we'll do try to bring this up a little bit. That's a little heavy handed. But I can fix that with my brush or with my sponge. Take a little bit off. I can even take some of it off with the with that. I don't have any knots on those two. So the knots, you want to kind of get that color down in there. You really, you don't want to have that white of the foam um, standing out at all. You, you want it all to be covered. Same with your little holes that you've poked in, your indentations. Give them a little bit of color. And then just take your, your sponge and just work on muting them a little bit. And there's times when your boards are gonna look like, oh boy, I think I messed it up. But if you just keep patiently working on it, you'll get to a spot where you like it. And um, you'll be right, you know, you'll be, you'll know when it's time to stop adding color. And if you don't, talk to somebody about it. Say, you know, I asked Brian, because he knows wood, uh, my husband, and he was like, yeah. When I was doing it with the really light, he was like, yeah, it doesn't really look like wood. It's too light. I was like, okay. So then I just kept working at it, working at it, adding some color, adding some texture. Okay, now the next piece, um, these aren't done, but the next piece I want you to know is make sure that you paint the edges of your boards. So when your boards go together, if they're not 100% flat, which, you know, not everything's perfect, especially Dollar Tree foam boards, if you have any gap, you don't want it to be white. You want it to be dark. 
that helps with the illusion. Um, the other thing you can do is um, she got some makeup sponges from the Dollar Tree that have kind of like a little handle on them and you just tamp down. They're kind of a square. I'll have to find some. I just used a little bit of a foam brush and I got some really dark, um, got some of this dark color and you need to go around the edge of your board. When you add a dark color around the edge of your board, that is also part of that fool the eye. It gives that dimension to your board and it's going to look like it's um, a three, more of a 3D shape. So you just go around the edge and when you put it next to your boards, it separates them just like the shiplap lines. That dark line separates your boards so that they look like individual boards. If you guys have any questions about anything else um, about this, feel free to message me. Um, seriously, um, check out Peppermint Cactus. Um, I'm not affiliated with her. I just found her videos and was just stunned at what she could do um, with these foam, foam core boards. So like I said, it's just a process of just continuing to work at that color until you like it, until you feel like it looks like a board to you. Um, it really is about just that depth of color and continuing to build up the layers. Tomorrow I plan to show you kind of how these boards ended up, where they ended up, and we'll mix these boards with um, the boards I already made. We'll put them on a foam core, a black foam core board, and then we'll transfer on it. So you can take a look and see how that looks all together. Uh, I'm probably gonna make the frame to go around the outside so it looks finished. Um, it's very light, that's what I love about it, is you know one of the challenges of having these pieces is that with wood is that they, they get heavy. Um, so the foam core is a great alternative um, to that super heavy board that you're trying to hang, you know, on a flimsy wall. Um, and obviously the hangers can be cheap and expensive, and that's, you know, what we're going for um, in the decorating world is to make something look great uh, for less money. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this idea. Um, I probably don't do justice. I know the gal um, over there, she's an expert. She's been doing this. I don't know. She's Her page has only been up for a month. Um, but obviously she has a lot of experience and I'm just a beginner. Um, so check her out. Um, I just am really uh, excited to keep trying this. I hope you guys will be excited and give it a shot. Um, if you try it, please make sure you go over to the VIP page and add your what you did. Show us your boards. Um, I would love to get tips from you guys when you figure this out. Um, yeah, me too, Kathy. I'm excited to see what this, I'm. all I can envision is the rooster on, on this board. So I'm excited to see what he looks like um, and that finished product will be fun to, to see and do. So I hope you guys are excited about this and want to give it a try. Um, you can see they're, they're pretty similar and it didn't take me very long. Uh, I'm going to work on these, these boards a little bit more. Uh, they need all the edging done, but that's really what makes it is all those little last details. You can see I've gone around the edges um, I've darkened the edges. Uh, I think the, the biggest no-no is don't use acrylic because that's going to make your paper on the front get too wet. Um, don't poke holes all the way through to the back. Um, that's about it. When you're cutting your boards, um, just take your time. Be patient. Use that straight razor. Um, that's the easiest 
method of cutting your foam board and have fun. Um, before we get going, I do have to draw a name. I had a lot of shares this week, so thank you so much, everybody who shared the video. Um, that's excellent. We've got a, some names in here, so uh, good luck to everybody. I'm excited to uh, see who wins. All right, let's pull out a name. Uh, Grace Bergstrom. Grace Bergstrom, you won our sprinkle giveaway. So thank you so much for sharing the video or a meme. Um, that's all you have to do is share a video or meme and I will get with Grace Bergstrom and um, find what she wants. She gets to choose one project that we've I've completed this week and she gets the project. Um, I think next week I might start doing a dish towel. Um, I want to be able to send things far away um, to whoever comments or whoever um, shares or sprinkles. So I think I'll start making a dish towel using whatever transfer we're using for the week. And, um, and we'll do it that way. Yes, Peppermint Cactus. She's on YouTube and she's also on Facebook. So check her out. Um, give her some love. Watch her and like her and subscribe to her. Um, I think she's going to come out with a lot of fun things for us. Um, Chalk Couture people who want some surfaces that are different. Um, you'll be blown away by what she's doing. So um, hopefully I did her justice. And um, if you watch some of her videos, uh, and then we'll talk about how to put the transfers on to these boards. Um, That'll be awesome. So thanks guys for watching. I was really excited about sharing this with you. I hope you love it as much as I do. And um, make it a great day. Bye guys.